Welcome to Microsoft 365 Excel, the complete story. And in video number 19, we're going to see a common business problem, budget versus actual, variance analysis. And we'll see how to do it three ways. Just like last video, we'll see Excel worksheet formulas, DAX, and data modeling. Now, anytime you're comparing budget and actual, here's our budget, here's our actual numbers, you're almost always going to have to deal with a grain problem. Now, the grain in this table is month product. The smaller grain over here is transactional product. That means the budgeting process is determining the target sales by product and month. So we can't directly match this number up to the numbers here. But it's no problem. From the transactional product grain, we'll just roll up the sales numbers by month and product. Then we'll have the actual amounts, and we can calculate variance and percent variance. Now, just like last video, we have two fact tables. We also have three dimension tables. And the product dimension table will have no problem filtering both fact tables. There's a product column here and here. Both of these will be on the many side. This will be the one side. And our date dimension table will have no problem filtering the transactional fact table or our budget fact table. Now, in our transactional table, we do have a customer column. And we have a customer dimension table. But guess what? If we connect this to our data model, it may be able to filter transactions, but it's never going to be able to filter this budget table. And the reason is simple. This budgeted amount is for product and month. If we wanted to include this, we'd have to include that attribute in the budget table. Now we're going to see three methods, worksheet, a data modeling solution with relationships, and then a DAX formula solution. Let's start with the worksheet method. Now, as we talked about last video, the hallmark of using worksheet formulas is we can point anywhere. It doesn't really matter what grain there is, because our formulas can deal with anything. However, adding totals and being able to move conditions around, like we're able to do in a pivot table, well, formulas just have a hard time with that. But if you're just interested in actual sales, budget, variance, and variance percent, we can do that easily with formulas. Now we're going to use sum ifs to aggregate by product and date the sales. Sum range, click at the top, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Criteria range, product, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace, comma. We don't have an Excel table here, so in criteria one, I'm highlighting all the conditions. This is Control Shift Down Arrow Control Backspace, a function argument array operation that will force some ifs to give me an answer for every row. Comma. Now date, we're given end of the month, and we really need to tell some ifs, hey, go from the beginning of the month to the end of the month. So we're going to list date twice. Comma. And the first condition will do the lower limit. And we have to put our comparative operator greater than in double quotes and join it to, we're going to have to use end of the month. Now, end of the month, if we try to do a function argument array operation, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, this is one of a bunch of functions that were added way back in the original day. And they do not handle function argument array operations unless you do a math operation. So the, tr the trick for end of the month and many other function is to add 0 at the end or do double negative. That's just a hack to get that function to work with a function argument array operation. Now, comma, we want the end of the previous month. That way, it'll give us the last day from the previous month, and we say, hey, greater than. Comma, we have to list date again, so I highlight the whole column. And this one's going to be less than or equal to the upper limit, which is all of the end of the month dates. And that's our sum if. Close and Enter. Variance is easy enough. We say 
the end amount, that's actual, minus the begin amount, which is the budgeted amount. Whoops, I forgot to do full column references. So Control Shift Down Arrow, Control Backspace. So to reference that spilled range, pound. That'll give me all the variances. Now we simply compare variance to the begin amount, the budgeted amount. Control Shift Down Arrow, Control Backspace. And I forgot again, but pound. And there we go. And that's our report with formulas. We get to see budget and actual side by side. The variance, it was up by about 1%, and then we were down by about 2%. All right, now let's go over and look at what I have labeled DAX and data model, but it's really a data modeling solution. Now, I've already used Power Query to bring these into the data model, so we'll go look at our data model. Over in Diagram View, we're going to leave Customer here. And here's date and product. We know that they will easily filter F transaction. This is a one to many. Also product, one to many. But now, if we think about how date and product are going to interact with this second fact table, well, let's think of product. This is a unique list. And over here, if we think about the Aspen product, well, there's an Aspen listed for every end of the month. So there's many Aspens over here, one over here. If we look at the actual tables in the product table, there's a single Aspen. And over here in the budget table, there's many. A single Aspen for each one of the end of the months. So we're totally allowed to connect to product in a one-to-many relationship. That way, when we filter product by putting Aspen in the row area of a visual or pivot table, Aspen will flow across, and only the Aspen records will be showing. Over here, Aspen flows across, and sure enough, only Aspen records. Now for our date table, if we think of a condition coming from a visual January 2019, when that flows in, this date table is filtered down to just the days, 31 days in January 2019. That flows across. The fact table is filtered down to just those days. And then we can get a total, an actual amount. But if we have 31 days filtered in the date table, what's going to happen if we connect to this table end of the month? Well, only one of the days, the very last day in January, will flow across. So January 31, 2019 flows across. And all of the dates, which will be three of them, for the three products would be filtered. So that means this is the one to many. And same on this side, one date to many. So we're totally allowed to drag date over to end of month. If we look at a picture, here's Aspen 2019 January. Well, this date flows into the date table. We have all the days for January 2019. Those flow across. Only dates for that month are showing. Then product, well, Aspen flows across. Product is only Aspen. How about our budget at the month level? Well, there's 31 days, but only one of them flows across to filter F budget down to the end of the month. Then we get product from the product table filtered down to just Aspen. And bam, we have a single budgeted amount. This is used up here in the pivot table. And then actual, that's just the sum from the F transaction filter table. And then we have budgeted actual variance and percent variance. So really, the solution is simple here. We just connect our four tables with these relationships. And then we're going to build a couple of measures to sum and calculate the percent variance. Now in F budget, we're going to build our budgeted sales. And it's simply the sum, looking at that budget, we'll add some number formatting. In F transactions, I'll create actual sales. That's simply a sum of that sales column. And we'll create our variation, or our var, equals square bracket. We take the end amount, which is the actual, minus the begin amount. And there's our budget. And then percent variation, well, we'll take our variance. There it is. That's the numerator, comma. The denominator square bracket, the begin amount, our budgeted amount. I'll add some percent formatting. Now over in diagram view, 
I definitely want to hide everything in the F budget. Right click, hide from client tool, except for our measure. Now, I'm going to hide date. Month number we always hide because it's just there for sorting. But I don't really want anyone to drag date because this is only set up for month and year. So hide. I hid the retail price and all the fields in F transaction. And now on the sheet var report, we dropped our conditions into the row. We're going to check budget, actual variance, and percent variance. And bam, there's our report. We have automatic subtotals. And if we don't like this layout, I'm simply dragging product above year and month. And there's our finished report, accurate results, formatting for our measures, automatic subtotals, and we can pivot however we want. Now I want to jump over to our Power BI desktop file and look at an alternative to using relationships. Here's our data model in the Power BI desktop file. And everything's the same, except there's no relationship to F budget. So how do we get the filters from the dimension tables, which will definitely flow to F transactions, but how do we get them to flow over to F budget? Well, on page 7 in our PDF notes, we're going to use the treatise function in Calculate. And all it does is it will simulate a relationship and pass filters from one table to another. So Calculate. There's the sum we want in our F budget. Treat us. We have to use it twice, once for each column, product and month. We use values in the first argument of treat us so that it sees the current filter context. So if this formula is in the Aspen row, treat us will take whatever the Aspen from product is and pass it over to F budget product. And then we do it again, treat us values on end of the month, because we want to take whatever filter is on D date end of the month and pass it over to F budget end of the month. Now over here in data view, in F transactions, I already created actual sales. Now we want to create budgeted sales. New measure, we'll call this budgeted sales. And we need to sum the budget column from F budget but there's no filter context for that measure. So what we'll do is we'll use Calculate to change the filter context. I want to sum F budget. There's our column, close parentheses. So that's the expression, the formula we want to change the filter context. Now comma, why don't I Alt-Enter, Tab. So that's the expression, Alt-Enter, Treatise. And we need values to see the current filter context. And we want to look at whatever the product is. So values returns a unique list in the current filter context. So when it gets to the Aspen cell, values will deliver a single table filtered down to Aspen. And now we want to pass that filter, comma, over to F budget product. Close parentheses. So that's passing just product, comma, Alt Enter. Treat us again. Now we want to look at the current filter context, D date, end of month. So January 2019, values delivers a single table from this column. We want to pass that filter over to F budget. There it is, end of month. Close parentheses on treat us, close on calculate. So there's the measure. We're going to simulate these two. Dimension table filters, pass them along to budget, and we'll get what we want. And then I created var based on actual and budget, and then percent var. Over here in report view, I have a matrix, and I'm going to check budget, actual, var, and percent var. And just like that, budget versus actual, there's our report. All right, over here in Power BI Desktop, we saw how to simulate relationships to a budget table using a formula. There's also an alternative using intersect. That's like an AND logical test. You use that if you're in an older version of Power Pivot. We also saw how to create a data model using relationships. Quite a simple solution. And of course, we started it off with the old faithful worksheet formulas. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.